So you might have noticed at some point over the last little while here that that ugly wall that turns my skin orange in our videos is gone. And it's been replaced by our new set. But what you also might have noticed is that our new set is super dirty. Well, our friends at Dyson noticed, so they sent us over the brand new Dyson Cyclone V10 so that we can clean it up and take you guys for a little tour of our new space. So, uh, well, that's not how you're supposed to do that. Lock and load and come along for the ride. We're gonna clean up and show you guys around. Kinda sounds like a ray gun. Ah, that sounds so cool! So let's start by meeting the V10. This right here is the design that made James Dyson, like, like that James Dyson, go to his team and say, you know what guys, all these other upright corded vacuums, blow them up. We're not gonna develop corded vacuums anymore. Forget about it. This is it. This is the future. I mean, he's 70 and British, so he probably didn't say it quite like that. But the, the sentiment is the same. Compared to their last gen, it's got longer battery life, up to 60 minutes of fade-free power, and thanks to the new digital motor that spins at a whopping 125,000 RPM, it even provides 20% more suction than the V8, making it their fastest vacuum cleaner motor to date. And it accelerates to that in just half a second. 40% more capacity in here. It's got a one-piece cleanable filter, so you just pop that out, run it under the sink. Look, they got little, little adorable kind of British looking faucets on there. It's also easier to clean, and you don't need much force to uh, open it up and empty the thing there. Yeah, see, it's easy like that. And of course, it includes a bazillion and one accessories. So let's get our tour started. Let's go in, uh, Let's go in handheld mode here, right? Let's start outside. So out here, you can actually see some hints of the old design. Let's uh, vacuum our house windows here. Not bad. So behind me, other than the green screen wall, pretty much everything has changed. Actually, even the green screen wall has changed if you look closely enough. So this used to go about two, three feet further that way. But what we actually had to do was cut the wall off and then we took this wall right here and like by actually like kicking it over, moved it about two to three feet this way. So the other side of this one is what used to be that orange wall and is now the inner wall of the living room. So we'll go in there in a minute, but first I wanna show you guys what we're doing with the outside. So you can see right there, we changed our minds about 12 foot high walls and then we ended up changing to 10 foot high walls. So we have just kind of like a weird thing. You can also see where the cable management comes in. There's networking running right there in an armored conduit along the roof because that allows us to avoid the more complicated permitting process for permanent structures. So the idea of doing exterior siding here, which by the way, vertical siding is a thing that people do, was that if we wanted to do like a, you know, honey, I'm home type of shot, it wouldn't be immediately obvious as long as we move that um, orb that we are not in a real house. Look at all this dust. <laughs> also on the outside, we've got a little bit of storage. So some lighting equipment, some um, you know pieces for videos that we happen to be working on right now. And then in the longer term, what we actually want to do is turn this into a somewhat convincing patio space. So we'd love to put down like some artificial turf and maybe some kind of nicer looking concrete and then be able to kind of do shots like sitting outside on the patio. There's a fair bit of work to be done lighting wise before we'd be able to do that though. So for now, what we generally do is you can see this diffuser right here and then we will just kind of blow enough light at them that we'll, we'll blow them out and it'll kind of look like outdoors. Like you can see an example of this on the uh, window with the blinds over there and the window with the plants over there, which leads us to one of the other purposes out here. So we created ourselves a little sort of forest back here so we could actually allow ourselves to see out into kind of a, a skybox-like backdrop 
with plants in front of it. Uh, since we're back here, you can actually see a couple of examples of ways that we light the windows. And then over on the other side, we've got the color temperature of the light changed so that it looks more like evening. All right, well, since we're back here, we might as well vacuum up some stuff. Oh, those are some big chunkies. We're going to max mode. Oh, -ho! wow. Picks up like big chunks. Wood, no big deal. <laughs> so the living room was actually probably the most natural, um, like easiest aspect of this project. We actually ended up doing two different iterations of it. Now the original plan had been to take, uh, so this was the orange wall right here, uh, up where it's 12 feet tall. And then this was the map wall, which you guys will probably remember. The original idea was to take these two walls and just convert them and then maybe expand a little bit over to where that spaceship thing was in the other corner. So Yvonne set out to just do a makeover. So we just changed the color, we ripped the map off, we got a couple shelves, and it made such a difference to the feel of the videos that we kind of realized, well, this is what we got wrong. We spent a bunch of money but ultimately we ended up with something that didn't look homey. You know, it didn't have pictures on the walls. It didn't have, you know, plants and, <laughs> they're all fake by the way, uh, plants and knickknacks lying around. This one doesn't even have a pot. What the heck happened to the pot, you guys? Oh, that is so cool. Look at this. It's blue and red. Now it's purple. Anyway, so what we realized was that you didn't have to do like a crazy set. We just had to build something that felt more like a house. So that was where the idea came from. Why don't we just treat our building like a giant soundstage and actually build a house inside it? This backing had glitter on it. <laughs> there we go. So then there were just two main design goals here. One was that we wanted the media center to look like cool and modern, but also be really versatile. So it didn't really matter what we put there. And then number two was that we wanted this, this sitting area. Hey, Pella, go sit down, go over there. We wanted the sitting area to look like a place where, you know, people might actually be sitting and hanging out. Pella would hang out with me on his free time, right? Yes, I would. It should be noted that even stuff that's relatively simple can be complicated. So check this out. First, I'm going to clean this windowsill. Yeah, baby. So in order to avoid reflections on the glass in our windows, they're actually installed, see that? On like a gimbal mount. So there's a rotating post in the middle at the top and the bottom that lets us reposition them so that we can avoid reflections. Uh, when we have the blinds open, which we often don't. Just cause like this looks a lot more convincing. You got your shadows and all that stuff than this so far, especially with like extension cords running through our foliage here. Is this one on a gimbal too? Oi! Yes, it is. Now we, we know the people that are living in the, in the old studio house still and we know that they are planning a kitchen reno. So we seriously considered offering to buy all the hardware and cabinetry from the old kitchen set and install it here. There were some things about the old kitchen that really didn't work that well. So for example, check this out. Now, whoa, look at that. We actually modified an up desk so that we could have a height adjustable island, which is really great when we're shooting B-roll. Like honestly, some of the stuff we did in the old kitchen, like build guides, was really, really difficult because of the fixed height of this. And then the other thing was that it doesn't have to be a real kitchen. Like this is not a real sink, which doesn't prevent people from dumping stuff down it, which is why we have these buckets here because it's already happened a couple of times, but uh, it's not a real sink. So we figured we could save some space in the kitchen by taking out stuff we don't need. So like you might've noticed it doesn't have a fridge. No fridge. So then over on this side, honestly, like there wasn't much of a plan for the dining room and everything over here. Woo! Yeah, like I think we've, 
I think we've shot here a couple times, but that's it. This mostly just kind of collects dust because we can't really shoot out this door in spite of its cool magnetic uh, closing mechanism. Just because we'd be going out into kind of ugly warehouse land and um, you know, just looking at a double door that's closed over doesn't look that amazing. So if we were ever shooting, you know, out of the kitchen, across here or something, it wouldn't look stupid over there. It would look like we were like we were in a house. Anyway, one of the areas that we intended to use a lot more than the dining room was this over here. So this was meant to be kind of like a reading nook. It's little details like this that you'll never really notice in the videos, but if you look close, most of these pictures are LMG staff, often me, either dressed really funny, like wrapped in cables or wearing you know, VR headsets, or dressed in drag. So we've got Colton in drag, Ed in drag. Is that Dennis? That is a creepy ass picture. Anyway, having something with depth behind you, this is something that I think people who are more familiar with filmmaking have probably always known, but something that helps make stuff look more natural, like a lot. So this corner is one that we use a lot. This one was intended for kind of the more professional or creative type products. So things like a, you know, a laptop or an all-in-one PC or whatever else. It was meant to look like a, like a place where you might actually work or study, but it's not the only desk that we have in the set. It's definitely the dirtiest one because it gets the most use, but that's okay. We have a solution today. Yeah, baby. This is not actually the ideal head for this, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Picking everything up anyway. Now we're gonna finish our tour in what is perhaps the most over-engineered, but, well, I think engineering is a bit of a stretch, but whatever, you get the point, get, get, get in here. So this is the bedroom. And the idea here was, again, trying to maintain the ability to shoot in any direction. And to do so, oh, we actually designed this rolling built-in bookcase. So whether I'm sitting here next to this picture or lying in the bed, you know, hitting a, talking to a Google Home or whatever else, or grabbing this vacuum. Now with the torque brush bar head, this is really dirty in here. Wow. The brush bar is actually doing a bang up job on here. I can walk around the entire room and it'll never feel unnatural. Uh, this is also where we put our second desk. Uh, the idea was that here is where we would do like gaming monitors and gaming systems and you know the more performance type stuff. So it's the work over there and then game over here. Now something that you might notice in this room as someone who is watching a behind the scenes tour is that it doesn't really have a door. Um, this was intended to be the closet. So this is one of those sliding style doors. So behind it, there's a couple of things. One is there's an emergency exit in the event that someone is in here and that, um, that built-in bookcase is closed. And two is actually access to the plant area that I showed you guys before. So this is the way that we can get around behind the stage, so to speak. I love carpet. Like I love the feeling of carpet, but the amount of just dust that it gathers is really horrible. It's actually kind of impressive how light this thing is. This is on uh, minimum too. Like it picked up that giant chunk of, uh, chunk of stuff on the minimum power setting. The main point Dyson's trying to make with this thing is that they don't really see the purpose in continuing to develop inconvenient corded vacuums when you can build something like this that does such a good job and is quick to just grab and go and run anywhere with whatever attachment you want. Like the fact that it converts from a full size to a portable like that is absolutely incredible. So they're just saying, okay, you know what, forget it. We're just not gonna invest in those other vacuums anymore. And I can totally see where they're coming from. So guys, you can check out the V10 at DysonCanada.ca or Dyson.com. We're gonna have that linked in the video description. And a huge shout out to you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed our tour of our new sets. Um, I hope you learned a little bit about the behind the scenes magic. Um, 
I know I actually did while we were doing this. There were a couple things I actually hadn't noticed about the design until now. And uh, we will see you guys again. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, like, all that good stuff. Da, 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 da. Check that out, Ed. How clean is the workshop floor now? You could eat off it. Like a savage. All right, let's get this dust out of here. Check this out. Gently, not by like, you just press that button. Boop, done. <laughs> <laughs>